I think a very important yet loosely understood feature of JavaScript is the feature that functions are objects. In this tutorial, I want to cement this idea with some examples. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Functions are objects. In fact, in JavaScript, almost everything is an object. The exceptions are primitive values. But the fact that functions are objects is such an important feature. It leads to functions being first class citizens in JavaScript, meaning functions are values that can be passed around. And since functions are objects, this is possible. Now, functions are a special kind of object called a function object, just like an array is a special kind of object called an array object. So a function object comes with key value pairs the other objects don't. Now, we frequently talk about this feature, but very seldom do we take the time to see it. And by that, I mean look at a function and reveal the object structure and work with it like an object. So let's take a moment to do that in order to cement this idea. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just declare a function. Hello world. All we're going to do is log to the console, the string hello world. All right, we have a function declared. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this on the console. Let's work with it a bit as if it were an object. Let's see its structure. So let me open up the console here. Now, first off, of course, we can invoke the function. And basically what happens there is the body of that function is stored as a string. And then that is invoked as JavaScript. And so that's what happens when we add two parens at the end of a function. Now notice that we can put the function name without parentheses. In that case, it basically returns to us the body of the function, all the code that is in that function. We see it right there. Now, in order to see a function as an object, we want to use con console.dir and then put the function name inside the parentheses. And this will allow us to open it up and look at it. So now I can click this down arrow and I can see key value pairs that are part of this object, this function object. Arguments, for example. These are the arguments that can be passed into the function. Caller is where this function was called from. Length, this is the number of arguments. Right now it's zero. And here's the name. Notice the name. Now, like objects in JavaScript, we have access to a prototype. And on that prototype, we can see methods. These are methods that are only used with functions, apply, bind, call, and so on. So we can see that the prototype is also applicable to the function object. Now, here are a few key value pairs that we could enter for a function, the length. The name, that's the name of our function because of how we defined it. And as I mentioned, there are also methods we can access. For example, if I do hello world dot to string, basically what it does, it returns a string of that function body, everything that was used to set up the code in the function. Now, let me jump back to sublime and I'm going to define a second function this time I'm going to define it as a function expression and this is normally how I define functions and the reason I do this is because it represents the true nature of functions we are assigning it to a variable this time I'm adding a parameter That 
That way we can look at the parameter that's a part of it. And I'll do a template st string here to display whatever value is passed into that parameter as a part of the console log statement. So there we have a second function defined as a function expression. Now, what will be the name of this function? Well, let's take a look at that really quick. Let's do hello world two dot name. Notice that it is the name of the variable that we assign the function to. That becomes the name of the function. Now also, let's look at the length. Now that is one because we have a parameter there. And of course, we can invoke it using parentheses. Now let me make one additional change here. Let's say I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to call this Hello World 3. But now I put a function name after this. Let's call it hworld. What becomes the name of this function? Well, you can probably guess that it's hworld, but let's just look at it really quick. There, it is hworld. So now we have a function name, and we also have a variable name. And they are separate. All right, now since functions are objects, we should be able to work with them like objects. So add our own key value pairs, add our own methods. And yes, we can do that. That's not something that's recommended to do with functions, but let's just see that we can do that. So let's say I'm going to put the author of this function, which is myself. So I'm going to put that in as a key value pair. And then also I'm going to put a method, just a sum method. Basically, this is going to take in two numbers and and it will return num1 plus num2. So now I've added some key value pairs. I've added a method and I've added a property to this function object. So if I now do hello world author, I get that name back. If I do hello world sum and pass in two numbers, it returns the value. So there I've been able to add methods and add properties to a function object. And obviously this still works as a function. That hasn't changed we still can invoke it with parentheses. So just a couple of things to emphasize that functions are objects. They're a special kind of object as mentioned, a function object, but they behave like objects. They have key value pairs. I think this is such an important concept to remember about functions in JavaScript. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember, I've provided discount links to my courses in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files I use. And I've lowered that level recently. You can also contribute by visiting my website. You can follow a link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.